What's happening guys? Welcome back to RC Tactical. Today I want to talk about something that may be troubling you guys, the Desert Lizard Internal Spring Shock. Um, I want to share with you some of the experiences that I have gone through with these things, how I have mine set up, and how to bleed these dang things because they can be a little bit of a pain. Um, don't take this as a be all end all for how these shocks should be set up because there's many different ways that you can get the, you know, put you know, different spring rates, you can alternate the springs up above or below depending upon the weight that your rig is, depending upon what you're, where you're going to be running it. Um, you can also run different shock oils as well, which will definitely substantially uh, change the way the shock reacts and how quickly it will react. Um, but I just wanted to share with you how I have mine set up and I'll explain how I have mine set up in the SCX 10.3 as well just so you have a different, you know, better idea of the two different rigs because the 10.3 is much heavier than the 10.2 Unimog and this one's obviously shorter as well. So, you know, two different examples to get you in the right path to get your set up um, and enjoy the, the shocks that you bought because these things look great, they're awesome and I think if you get them set up properly, you're going to really enjoy them. So um, I really wanted to share this video with you guys. And I think it's a perfect time because the front axle on the Unimog is totally snapped. And I got to replace it. So let's get on into it. All right, guys. I have one full shock here. I haven't taken this one apart, but I've gotten this one separated and drained out. And you can see all this oil is gray. It was clear when I added it in. Now this, is, I would say that I probably added this shock oil about a month ago. And I think that's just the inside of the, the shock body kind of leaching the metallic dust or whatever was in it um, into the oil because the oil is 100% silicone. So there's nothing corrosive in it. Um, and you can pick that stuff up at your local hobby shop. You can pick it up online. There's many places you can pick up shock oil. These particular ones have 80 weight, which is kind of what adds the slow movement of them. And I really enjoy that because it makes it more predictable of a ride, um, especially whenever you're traversing over some really nasty, gnarly rocks and terrain. It's not a fast jump, so you're not the, the body of the truck isn't going to lurch one way or the other as you're going over obstacles. It's more of a slow movement the axles will move much slower from left to right and from up to down whenever you have a heavier weight in it now they say you know anything above 80 is kind of crazy because it's it's just terribly slow and as you can see 80 is really really slow of a response on both the end and you know the inward motion of the shock you can see that, you know. Um, but I wanted to bring the attention to these springs. Now, this spring is the stock one. I did not change this. I didn't do anything with it. Um, I did take the the spring that comes in the top end, the above the plunger, out and replaced it with this wee little baby one. Now, this is the next harder one up of this one. And I believe it is meant to go in place of this to add more resistance force on the top end of the stroke. However, I drop this one in up top and that keeps the droop of the truck nice and low. And that's why these shocks are almost bottomed out whenever the truck is just sitting still. Um, there's not a lot of resistance until you almost reach the, the bottom of the inward portion of the stroke of the shock. Um, that's the way I like to run it, and I run it all, all four around the same. Uh, I think it's a little more of a predictable ride, like I was saying earlier with the oil. So with the combination of the oil, the heavier weight oil, and the all four corners of the same setup, it's a predictable ride for me. Now, some people run heavier oil in the front or heavier oil on the back or more resistive springs in the rear that really depends on where your weight is sitting um, I just run all four the same and I've had a lot of luck with it like this so the itsy bitsy droop spring up top uh, one of the guys we run with as a matter of fact 
I believe he does not run any spring up top, so it is just full compression until you go over an obstacle and it works its way out and then returns. Um, I've seen that on a couple different rigs and it runs really nicely, but you're gonna, not going to have anything to add any cushion when you come down. Now, it's not really going to matter as far as wear and tear on your vehicle as much as I think the predictability upon, you know, drops. Um, I've had a lot of luck with this thing not flipping over from left to right or even tipping over from front to rear on steep ascensions. Uh, but that also may have to do with some of the weight I have down below. And you don't want to go crazy with weight because you don't want to make your ride insanely heavy. And I'll tell you from experience, like on my SCX 10.3, it is an insanely heavy rig. And you definitely can tell, um, performance-wise, that the Unimog does better. But I wanted to show you guys what I have going on. These are the, these are, that's how the shock is set up inside. And you can see that this is how it performs. with that setup with the 80 weight shock oil with the medium droop spring up top and the light droop spring down below and honestly guys it's it's a pretty even it feels the same pushing and pulling and that's kind of what I've attributed a lot of my predictability to. Going, if, you, if you're going for a scale crawl, nice, slow crawl setup, you know, this is not a speed setup. This is not a speed setup. Um, I couldn't even tell you how to set it up for a speed setup. But I have a lot of luck with a nice, slow crawl with the way that shock is set up.
The next thing I wanted to go over with you guys is how to bleed these things. Now, I add these uh, full of oil. I make sure that they are completely full whenever I'm bleeding these out and then bleed the excess out of these. I know some people will use just a tad of oil and let them ride with just air in them. I like the response and the dampening that the oil adds, but that, that again is a personal preference. You know, it's, it's obviously a, a quick, it's a, you know, it's a quick motion. You're going to have m maybe more bounce in your ride. And that's not something I personally look for. Um, but if you're going for maybe a more realistic scale build, you know, like an old truck type build, that may be something that you may be interested in doing. I add the oil to about to about where the almost where the threads start. I went way over there, so I'm gonna have a big mess on my hands here in just a minute, which is super cool, super cool. I'm gonna do this a little different, uh, just so you guys can see it. Usually, I have a paper towel wrapped around this to kind of add a little bit of protection because it does make a mess. run it in and out a couple times. Now I've, I've got this screwed down about halfway right now. I like to start with that half and get it worked out fully extended against the spring and push it in against the spring. And do that a couple times till you feel like you've sufficiently, you're gonna, you're gonna do it again, till you feel like you've sufficiently gotten the air out. And I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about because you're going to need to do it again. Let me tighten this up a little bit. And don't skip past this part, guys. This is I'm trying to explain exactly what a lot of people run into here when you're bleeding your shocks. So you follow the instructions, you bled it out, you, you, you know, you, you've ran it up and down a couple times till all the air bubbles have stopped, right? You, you screw this in here. Let me tighten it up. Make sure the O-ring there is nice and sealed. Okay. So you think you think you're done? Not an issue, right? Look at that. It that's where it's deadheading. I mean, I'm I'm squeezing it, and it is just dead deadening out right there there is still an air pocket in there and every time you run it up and down it's gonna get worse look at that i i cannot push that any further now if you look at this one full compression this is a that's how a bled out shock should compress down to now there'll be a little bit of variables depending upon how long your spring is you know if your spring is longer than obviously it's gonna take up a little more space when it, whenever it's fully compressed but that's dead now like you're hitting a wall you still got to bleed this out some more guys you still got to bleed it out so what I'll do is after do after that whole procedure of filling it up running the plunger in and out a couple times and bleeding it at half thread I bring it down to just a wee little bit I mean there's not very much there and I do it again in and out and I am getting some more out of it right there you gotta fight them The stock SCX 103 shocks are really nice because they have that bleeding screw at the top and you can kind of just run it in and out, then just run the screw in and, and they're bled, you know, it's no problem. These, not so much, not so much. 
and I can press them a little bit as I'm tightening the shock head just to add a little bit extra resistance and kind of keeps the air from getting in there but you don't want to push down too hard or it'll push that, that o-ring that's on the cap of it right out the side and then you'll have it bulging out one side or the other and you don't want that obviously it's not going to seal the the shock body and this is very slippery so it's it's a, it's a pain with the with the gloves on all the way compressed now that's a bled shock with some fresh oil in it i'm using 80 weight boom there you go